It's one of the worst weather disasters to strike the United States. A dangerous tornado in the Tuscaloosa metro area. Holy get it, buddy! It's massive! As soon as the house lifted up off of us, we were instantly sandblasted. I remember being in the air. It felt like being in a blender with two by fours and sheetrock. In a matter of minutes, the monstrous twister decimates a city. Yeah, that's when it really clicked. Get away from the window! We could all die in there together. Oh my God! Now, follow the path of destruction. We can see the tornado! Block by block and minute by minute, as a violently rotating tornado tears apart businesses, wow. oh. houses, oh my God, I hope they're okay. and lives. Windows are going out! It's all next. Oh my God! On Tornado 360. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, April 27, 2011, 4.43 p.m. All around the metropolitan area, sirens wail, warning of imminent danger to over 91,000 residents. Confirmed sighting, debris falling out of the sky, 18, 19 miles ahead of the tornado now. The nightmare scenario for a highly populated area, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Within 24 hours, 226 tornadoes strike the United States. The largest outbreak on record for a single day. One of the biggest ones touches down in Greene County, Alabama, and barrels toward the city of Tuscaloosa. It's home to the University of Alabama, where students and faculty make up a large portion of the population. You need to be seeking shelter in the lowest innermost portion of a sturdy building, try to get under some heavy furniture, put a bicycle helmet on. This is a, an extremely dangerous situation. It is right there. Oh my God, come on. I can see the tornado. 5 p.m. Over five miles from the outskirts of the city on 25th Avenue East, Adam Melton and his girlfriend Jessica Colburn have been watching forecasts about the violent vortex from an apartment complex. You could see the tornado as it was starting to come toward Tuscaloosa. So we knew about where it was, we knew about what direction it was headed, but we didn't quite know it was going to get so close. 5.05 p.m. Over one and a half miles to the southwest on Cedar Crest. Students Will Caruso, Aaron Ayers, and Derek Fenton have been keeping tabs on the severe tornado warnings. The news kept saying that it was headed towards downtown, which was in the opposite direction of where we lived. So we didn't think that there was really anything to worry about. I've always had a fascination with tornadoes, bad weather, and I just had my camera handy. And, you know, I thought I might get some good shots of some lightning or something. It turned out to be a lot more. 5.13 p.m. When entering the city limits, the tornado savagely swirls to the northeast, strengthening to a level EF4 on a scale of 0 to 5, with winds reaching 190 miles per hour. Oh, no. No doubt about it. Debris being picked up. Uh, up to at least 8,000 feet high. It is doing extensive damage, unfortunately, in Tuscaloosa. One mile to the northeast, on 25th Street, student Peyton Holly and his roommate Carson Tinker scan the sky for a tornado. We had heard about tornadoes all morning. I wasn't concerned because we just are so used to the tornadoes. There's so many around here in the spring. We went out on the front porch to see if we could see any sign. But little did we know it was behind us. Oh my God. There's so much debris in the air. Oh 
Carson and Peyton alert their other roommate, Alan Estes, and Carson's girlfriend, Ashley Harrison, that they need to take cover. Their best option is a three by eight foot closet. We chose the closet because it was the innermost room in the house without an exterior wall or a window. Huddled together in a cramped closet, they hear the tornado thundering down the block, getting closer and closer. We knew at that point that it was going to hit the house and that there was really nothing we could do. It sounded like a train far off. But as it got closer, it got louder and louder. And then it sounded like a jet engine. It was just hovering right above the house. The house started to rattle and shake and then pick up off the foundation. I could see light because the roof was gone. The entire house is sucked into the mammoth tornado. I remember being in the air mixed in with the debris from the house. And then I blacked out. From where the house once stood, Peyton is catapulted onto a field 75 yards away. I was knocked out or just passed out from shock. I was hit in the face. My lip was busted completely in half. Broken nose, my right knee was torn ligaments. I had a badly bruised left ankle so I could barely walk. Peyton sees Alan and Carson lying less than 10 yards away. Carson was laying down, and Alan was worried that he wasn't alive. So Alan made sure and woke him up. I was already moving, trying to get up myself. So we all just kind of banded together and made our way to the neighbor's house. Carson had a chunk of flesh taken out of his ankle. He had muscle trauma all over his body. Alan had cuts and bruises and maybe a broken finger, but he was able to help us. The neighbors heard us hollering for help. Carson just kept repeating, where is Ashley? Where is Ashley? As they stare at the endless heaps of rubble, they realize that Ashley is missing. Ashley's mom did call. I talked to her several times, but I was no help. I had no idea what had happened, where I was, or anything. As the survivors search for Ashley, the twister continues to hack a deadly trail to the northeast leveling restaurants and stores along 15th Street, a main thoroughfare. Wow. A half mile away, Will Caruso can't believe the twister is now blazing towards his home, where roommates and several friends have gathered. When I saw the tornado, it was a wall of debris, and I could see things in the air spinning and falling. God, you can feel the ground shaking. And I just knew then that we were in trouble. Oh my God. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, April 27th, 2011, 514 p.m. A massive level EF4 tornado tears through the heart of the city. A dangerous tornado in progress in the Tuscaloosa metro area. A terrible situation. The merciless tornado now approaches a house occupied by Will Caruso and several college friends. Holy get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. 
I started hurling everyone back towards the hallway. I was trying to push everyone further away from all the windows. Oh my God, get down, guys. We were just kind of huddled together in the bathroom. I got him. Everybody was scared. I didn't think I could die sitting in that bathroom. Holy shit. It's right outside. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was just rumbling the ground. You could feel it. The pressure started to drop, and your ears would start to pop. And uh, I realized that we were getting ready to go through a tornado, and there's nothing I can do about it. I was very scared. It is exactly 514. The tornado is passing over us. South Coast, Alabama. I love you guys. I love you guys. I just heard, yeah, I love you guys. And that's when it really clicked for me that, you know, we could all die in there together and that this would be the last time I ever saw my friends. A uh, tree fell in the house. And the ceiling above me came down. That's when I thought we were going to die. 30 terrifying seconds later, silence. I was still frightened. We started getting up and saw the damage. Oh my God, the house Look at is destroyed. The rest of the house is badly damaged. Oh my God. Windows were all blown in. There was glass embedded into the drywall. Come on. If we would have been standing in the living room, we would have been cut to shreds. Tornado just passed over the house. My house is destroyed. Cars destroyed. Is anybody want to see the house? It's completely collapsed. Oh my God! Everything is gone. There's got to be people trapped in there. We got to check on them. When we walked outside, we were shocked that our entire neighborhood had been destroyed. It was total devastation. We got to get check on people. We got to start going to hell. This is 15th Street. See power lines down, everything's destroyed. Houses right here. Oh my gosh. We're homeless. Houses destroyed. While Will, Derek, and Aaron help neighbors trapped in the wreckage, the tornado rages on. The University of Alabama is on the east side of Tuscaloosa. Folks, you need to take cover immediately in this case. By 15 p.m., the tornado passes by the University of Alabama, narrowly missing the southeastern edge of campus. That thing is destroying everything. Less than a mile and a half from campus, in a second-story apartment, students Adam Melton and Jessica Colburn prepare to take cover, but still don't see any signs of the tornado. At the time, I was satisfied with getting in the bathtub. You have kind of a safe compartment that you're able to be in and be contained in. Suddenly, the power goes out. My heart started beating a lot faster, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really close. Jessica walks out to the balcony. Directly across the parking lot, a group of students rush towards a maintenance cellar door in the back of their house. She asks them, do you know any information about the tornado? Do you know if it's coming to us? And when they looked up at her, they were looking in the direction the tornado was coming. And they said, it's right behind you. The ferocious twister is heading straight for the back of their apartment. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, April 27, 2011, 516 p.m. It is right there! One of the strongest tornadoes in U.S. history has already slashed a five-mile path across the city. It's now bearing down on the northeast neighborhoods. Adam Melton and Jessica Colburn flee their second-floor apartment for safer cover. 
a maintenance seller below a home directly across from their parking lot. Just before I dove into the maintenance store, I turned around and looked back up at the apartment, and I could see the leading edge of the funnel cloud as it leaned over our apartment. I could see the swirling action of the clouds, and so I knew that it was right there on us. The maintenance cellar is already full of frightened students. And I kind of glanced around, and being an engineer, I just noticed the construction of the house. And when I turned around and looked at the tornado, I noticed it was turning counterclockwise. But I knew that the safest wall to be would be the right wall because it would all the debris would get thrown over us instead of into us. Adam orders everyone to sit, knees to chest, against the right wall. And I knew it was going to be very close, but I didn't know we were going to be directly hit. So I decided to pull my phone out and start videotaping. This is the last one that came as close as in 1932. My ears are popping. Oh, my ears are popping. Oh, my God. One of the guys under the house was trying to hold the door shut, and the wind kept ripping it in and out of his hand. It actually reminded me of the movie Twister when the farmer is trying to hold on to the cellar door, and he's, you know, sucked away into the air when the tornado comes over them. And so I was yelling at him to get away from the door and come join us at the wall and get to safety. Get away from the door. hear things hitting the house above our heads and then I noticed that the support pole in the middle start to shift and I saw it tilt forward and then when it tilted forward the whole house lifted up and flew away into the air. The winds just hit us like we were inside of some really fast roller coaster and you weren't really able to determine what direction the wind was really coming from. It was just kind of swirling around us. So I had to close my eyes because we were instantly sandblasted because we were directly under the tornado itself. Within seconds, two massive objects tumbled down on top of them. Something hit my head and pushed me down. I, mean, I could see the undercarriage of what I thought was a car, and I realized that it was the rear axle that had just grazed my head as it went over us and was pushed in on top of us. After 30 seconds, the tornado's gone. Adam, Jessica, and the others climb out of the caved-in cellar. It felt like a miracle that Adam told us to get on the right side of the house. We saw large debris everywhere and cars coming in at all sides of the walls, and it wouldn't have been the same if we weren't sitting on that side of the house. That void is where we were, and there were people all along this wall, about five or six of us, I guess, underneath this house that used to be here. It really looked like a war zone. Everything was just meshed together. Where everything had been just moments before, it was completely gone. We walked around the side of the building and actually saw my shower and bathtub hanging off the side of the building from the second floor. So I'm really glad that we didn't get in that. While Adam and Jessica search for survivors, two and a half miles to the southwest, the hunt for Ashley Harrison continues. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, April 27, 2011, 519 p.m. In a mere six minutes, a ferocious EF4 tornado gouges a six-mile swath of destruction. Leaving the city and heading north, the tornado carves a total continuous path of 80 miles for over one hour and 30 minutes. Back in Tuscaloosa, over 10% of the city is left in ruins. I've got to say, I've never seen devastation like this. The tornado spares the city's main hospital. Now overburdened with approximately 900 wounded, including Peyton Holly and Carson Tinker. I remember seeing people being brought in on doors because there were no stretchers. Doctors were just going from patient to patient in the hallway. I got stitched up right there in the hall. Peyton and Carson learn that Ashley Harrison had been found. She and 52 others didn't survive the disaster. Two years later, the physical pain has faded, but the emotional scars remain. 
we're thrown about 75 yards and landed within about 10 yards of each other. And then little did we know that Ashley, with the rest of the house, was over here. A memorial marker is erected near the spot where Ashley died. I come here to reflect a lot and just think of how, how lucky I am. And Ashley and I were, were great friends. Um, she was an inspiration to me, just her work ethic and her personality. I hope that I can make her proud. On the northeast side of town, in another empty field, Adam and Jessica share memories of loss and hope for a brighter future. I can't even really tell how far back it went, the apartment complex, you know? Yeah. I hope we never live through something like that again, living through that together. I knew that I wanted to marry Jessica, so on the anniversary of the tornado, I proposed to Jessica at the site of where we were hit. I definitely take every day as a gift, and I try to live my life a little differently now. The people of Tuscaloosa reclaimed their community, but their lives have been forever changed by one of nature's deadliest forces.